Hi, I'm Judd, and I like to paint. And today we're talking about goals. Goals are important. So as a painter, a lot of times people think that you sort of paint whatever you feel. There are certainly people that are like that. I am not like that. Given that this is New Year's resolution season, I thought I'd talk about goals and the importance of setting goals uh, if you want to succeed at painting, no matter what those goals are. Not everyone focuses on it maybe as much as I do. Uh, a lot of artists kind of just go with the flow and that's that's fine, that works for them. Um, I'm a goal setter, a box checker, a to-do list maker, and I think it's really important. So the big thing about goals is they give you something to shoot for, this is obvious. Goals can be tricky with artists. There's a myth of artists being sort of lone geniuses or whatever that don't have don't get any help. And goals can sort of act like like a coach or a trainer, right? So a boxer, for example, has a trainer that pushes them and gets them to do things that they might not do. Um, a writer has an editor. Uh, an artist might ha work with a gallery or an art coach or something like that, or a mentor. Um, same idea, but a goal can work in the same way where it's setting up constraints for you and you have to push against those constraints. Um, it takes a little bit of discipline to be able to not cheat on that goal, but it can be a good way to build yourself a little box that you have to work in, which I find super helpful. So let's talk about setting goals. There's a book called Messy, which I'll link below, um, that I read. It's It has a really interesting take on planning versus doing. So it talks about divergent thinking, which is um, more of your all possibilities are available to you and that's one kind of thinking you go real broad and it can be a pretty uncomfortable space for some people um, for me personally I, I it's hard for me to get into that mode it's a little bit of an existential um, type of conversation where it's like well I want to uh, where do I want to go you're like oh geez I could go this way I could go this way I want to work on this I want to work on that what's the right path uh, divergent thinking. You're going in a lot of different directions, not really putting constraints on what you're thinking about. What should I do? And then the other way is how. When, how, um, how often, all that stuff is the convergent thinking. So separating the two into what is what should be the goal and then how to accomplish it. How to accomplish it is way easier, um, in my opinion. Like once you have the goal set, then it's just about executing, right? Put your head down and, and grind at it um, for a really long time. That's how I would think about it, right? So separating the two tasks, if you're thinking about setting goals like this time of year, focus on the subjects close to me that I've never seen before, you know, being a tourist in your own town, that kind of thing. The what is the what, right? Do some brainstorming about how big you wanna go, what are your big overarching goals maybe for the year, and then boiling those down. So last year, for me, around this time, I wanted to really focus on plain air so I had an event in Laguna Beach that I knew I was going to, or that was my goal, in October. So I really wanted to focus on plein air and do as many reps as I could. So I decided to paint 100 paintings in a year, focusing on um, just where I live in Colorado. I'd done a bunch of traveling the year before, so I thought, hey, I'll, I'll just focus on... Um, so the goal was uh, 100 paintings, so that's roughly two per week with a couple of weeks off to te teach workshops and that kind of thing. So that's what I did, um, a little uncomfortable. Um, and that's a point I would bring up is the goal should be slightly more difficult than you think is possible, right? I could easily have painted um, uh, one, once a week, you know, and gotten 50 out, out of the, the whole goal. But doing 100 was just like, uh, maybe? Um, feels a little uncomfortable, but... Um, it's uh, getting to stretch a little bit is how I like to use a goal to, again, build a constraint like a trainer or a coach who would tell you to do two more push-ups or tell you to, you know, run one more lap. I think that's important. Um, so it's slightly more uncomfortable um, than you might be used to and then just committing to, to the goal, which that's, you know, maybe for each person to figure out how to, how to best do that. Um, setting that goal of 100 in a year um, really helped. So once I had the, the big goal of 100 a year, breaking that down into monthly goals, I knew I needed you know eight-ish, 10, something like that um, per month. And then that roughly 
uh, broke down to two per week. Um, so, you know, with these, these pieces, you know, they're not big. Um, you know, these were the six by eights that I was doing all year. Um, so two per week, you know, I really had to focus on planning that week. Um, where was I going to go? Uh, what day? Traveling, driving, you know, on, on Sundays, I would typically like tape up my paper, clean my palette, just have everything ready to go. I could really focus on the, the doing part. And that's um, back to my point about uh, divergent and then convergent. Like now it's more of the how. Like once I set the goal, 100 paintings, two per week, now it's the how. I do it on this day, I gotta prep all this stuff, have it all ready to go, and it makes it a lot easier to just focus um, on checking that box of two per week. Yes, the goal is 100 down the road, um, but I'm not really focusing too much on that. And really just focusing on weekly boxes to check. But, you know, I would use to-do lists um, to say, okay, number 38, number 39 this week. That's all I need to focus on is just getting this done. Uh, and that, that helps a lot. Um, I would also plan all my locations. So again, divergent, where could I go? I would spend a couple hours like looking on Google Maps and like photos and this is a state park, this is two hours away, this is one hour away, this is three hours away, it would be a big day if I planned this. Had them all listed out in distance from my house. So I'd be able to like, oh, I'm kind of strapped for time today. I would, um, you know, go for a shorter one and try to knock out a few versus a big day at a national park or something. I'd have to plan and buy tickets and da da da. Um, so that helps, again, like doing all the the what thinking in a block, and then when it comes to execute, it's a lot easier to just do. Because then you don't get stuck in that, uh, maybe I'll do this, or I'm not really feeling it, or whatever. If you can figure all that out ahead of time and just commit to doing when the time comes, um, it's a heck of a lot easier. Overlapping goals. So another thing to think about uh, when setting goals is overlapping them. So that might mean just figuring out what's important to you and then trying to layer goals so that they can um, double up and do more with the same goal. So for example, um, I didn't want to travel as much outside of the state um, this year, and I wanted to see places that I had never been before. Um, I wanted to um, focus on plein air to work towards this event, and I wanted to, I had this idea for a show. So it's like, okay, 100, that seems like a, a clever idea for a show places I've never been to, only in Colorado, training for this event. I, I get you know four things accomplished with that one goal um, and kind of bake it in together. Um, another example might be, you know, I'm thinking about this year and um, uh, still keep plain air going, but I might be focusing a little bit more on story and narrative, which means maybe more figures. So I'm going to be doing figure painting a lot, still life, and then more conceptual art and trying to like layer all those together in a week. So I'm always observing something, but it might not just be plain air like I've been doing um, this year. So a little bit more abstract, but still trying to layer things together to where I'm not diverging into multiple angles that don't really relate to each other, but converge on a single um, point of focus. Um, I think that just gets more done with your time because you're only you only have the time that you have, so making it um, as efficient as you can um, is important, depending on what you're trying to do, you know, setting big goals. It'd be like um, you're trying to get in shape, right? Um, if you're trying to get in shape, yeah, you could go to the gym, but let's say you are you also have a goal of trying to be in nature more, and you also have a goal of reading more books. Well, then you might decide, hey, I'm gonna run a half marathon, and I'm gonna train for it so I can be outside and do my runs outside, and I'm gonna listen to audiobooks while I do it. So then you, you accomplish three things in one and you get the bonus of all those things working together in the same amount of time. So something like that. So let's talk about staying motivated. Um, you know, you, you've got the, the urge and you, you get that peak of momentum early on. This is like why gyms are always full in January and then starts to, to taper and wane. And sometimes it can be frustration about your pace or your output, something like that, um, or the goal just feels too far away. That can be a problem. So staying motivated, for me, it's a lot of um, box checking. So I would have a calendar up on my wall, you can't see it, um, a weekly calendar where I would say like, okay, four hour block for plain air here, four hour block for still life or whatever, um, check that box. 
um, and really just focus on the week and not even caring much about the output at that point, just more getting it done. I talk about in my workshops a lot, um, finishing. Finishing is the most important thing, especially early on, because you need the reward cycle to become self-sustaining, right? If your goal is to finish, not to make something awesome or amazing, you're very much more likely to accomplish the goal of finishing versus the subjective goal of this is awesome. Because if it's not awesome, then you're like, I'm going to tweak this, I'm going to work with this, and it's, it could become a never accomplishable goal. But if finishing is a goal, then yeah, you can finish, you can finish, you can finish, and move on, which um, oftentimes just holds people back from, from making any progress, so just letting go of the outcome. However, being satisfied with the progress rather than the output and just having a little faith that the output is going to culminate in something. Ironic thing is that you're not focusing on the outcome, which actually makes the outcome better um, in my experience. So um, routine definitely helps with this, which might sound counterintuitive for an artist. Um, you know, just thinking like, oh, you want to go with the moment and be inspired. And there's all kinds of books written, writers especially. It's like you get up and write. You get up and paint, doesn't matter if you feel like it, doesn't matter if you're motivated, doesn't matter if you're inspired, get up and you do it. And then you find the inspiration through the process rather than you know, waiting for inspiration to strike. Because it may or may not happen, and if it doesn't, you don't have, you're, you're left with nothing. Um, and it's just a safer bet to do the work um, and let the inspiration come. And it tends to work like that, I've found. Um, you know, there'll be days where it's 30 degrees out and you really don't want to go outside and, you know, put on all the gear and all that stuff. But you do it, you get out there and you find a spot you've never seen before and the light's amazing and magical and um, it works out great. So just committing to doing can bring about um, pretty surprising outcomes if you can commit to it. I would have a routine of um, whenever I would, um, you know, do one of these, I would come home. I would retouch everything. Um, I would reload my palette, retape everything, sort of in that routine of, okay, on to the next one. Um, I would set it up on the wall and uh, move on. There is something to be said for evaluating what you've done, but I would try to box that into a very specific constraint or activity. So I would keep um, this, um, this is a, I don't know what you'd call it, but this is a critique journal. So what I would do in the course of a week is on the wall over here, um, I would have my plain airs just across this um, rack up here. And any other studies I did, like figure drawing that week or um, you know, pencil drawings or still lifes or whatever, I'd put them on the wall. And I'd sit here and I would look at them and write down, oh, that was good, or I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of repetition in this kind of composition. Maybe I should try something new next week or I'm seeing a lot of fussiness here, or from a distance, the values look off here, I need to focus on this. So subtle adjustments in the next week's thinking based on what I had done previously gave me a little window to be critical on what I'm doing outside of the activity, then put it away, and then just go again and do the thing. And again, separating the two what and how activities, um, for me, just helps a lot. So social media can be a good thing for output. Um, when I started with Instagram, I decided to just let go of if things aren't good enough to just post every every single thing I painted. Um, you can scroll all the way back if you want to. Um, be warned, it's a lot of junk. But um, it was good because I sort of let go of um, the finish and just use that as a finishing move, for lack of a better word, you know, this painting is done, I'm gonna take a picture of it and hit upload, and that's it, I'm done. Uh, I can move on to the next one. Um, and that was enough for me. Moral of the story, I guess, is with these large goals, um, fighting against that constraint all year, in my case, for the, the 100 that I did, you know, leads you to this level of output, you know, in a year, and it really adds up. I wouldn't even look at them all laid out until I was at number 99. I hadn't laid them all out to see 
I basically was saving it for the very end and just trying to stay motivated. Like I'm so close. Putting that last piece of the puzzle into place is something I was really looking forward to and savoring, which is another point about setting goals is once you get there, you do need to rest a little bit and enjoy it, right? So if you've ever ran a race or done something where you've accomplished that goal, finished school, whatever, you get that little bit of relief after the goal is done, which is really important, I think. It's like you have all these little dopamine hits of accomplishing the weekly goal, and then you get the big one at the very end where you can kind of bask in it for a little bit. However, my, uh, my advice would be to not linger in that too long. It can be a little bit of a trap that keeps you from going big again and thinking about, okay, where's the, where's the next big goal that I'm trying to do? And goals don't have to be output like I'm doing here. Goals could be learning something. Um, goals could be exploring an idea. Goals could be not being so production oriented. If you're a painter and you're just like, man, I keep, keep steering right back into stuff for the gallery, stuff for the show, stuff for the website, stuff for this, stuff for that, stuff for social media. And just being like, my goal is to not post things. Like that, that's a totally valid goal too. Um, just, you know, how you put constraints on that to push a little bit would be what I would focus on. So once you finish, that can be a really tricky area because you're, you're basking in finishing and all that, that uh, relief and excitement and all that stuff of finishing, you get that big, <sighs> you feel the relief, you feel that um, sort of heavy sigh of accomplishment. Um, but when you start thinking again about the divergent goal, like what could I do? That can be anxiety inducing, right? It's like, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know means um, I have to sit with this uncomfortability of not knowing. And if you start looking forward to that or not looking forward to that process again, um, you can sort of sit and wane, sort of ride out your, that accomplishment and then you sort of ease off and, and um, maybe lose some momentum. So again, this is more thinking of you've got really specific things you want to accomplish. Um, it's not to say that's the only way of doing it, but it works for me. Go big. What should I do? What can I do? What do I want to do? Then go small. How can I do this? How can I schedule it? How can I work around this constraint? How can I stay motivated? How can I check off my progress? And then you know work towards that throughout the year and kind of staying focused on the, uh, the how rather than the what. So that's it on goals. Hopefully that helps. Uh, if you have questions or comments, just message me on Instagram or send me an email on my website. I'd be happy to help. See you next time.